Hello and welcome to the AI, your English news bulletin. I'm Aki Vito and these are the headlines. The historic parliamentary core committee meeting with the NSC and IM was held today at the Rhododendron Hall Police Complex, Chumukidima in Dimapur. The Chief and General Secretary of the NSC and IM, TH Muiva, along with the President of NSC and IM, Q Tukru were present at the meeting along with the government's core committee. Amid the crisis in the Manipur Pradesh Congress, the AICC in charge and former Union Minister Bhakta Charandas arrived in Imphal on Wednesday. Bhakta Charandas' arrival in Imphal is being seen as an attempt by the Congress High Command to resolve the crisis within the party. Two prominent political personalities from Assam, Samujal Bhattacharya from ASU and Anup Chetia from the Protox faction of Ulfa reportedly figure in the leaked list of potential spyware targets. More than 4,300 people have died of the deadly black fungus in India in a growing epidemic of the disease. The historic parliamentary core committee meeting with the NSC and IM was held today at Rhododendron Hall Police Complex Chumukidima in Dimapur. The Chief and General Secretary of the NSC and IM, TH Muiva, along with President NSC and IM, Q Tuku, were present at the meeting. Though members of the NSC and IM were not able to comment on the developments and outcomes of the first meet between the two, co convener of the Parliamentary Core Committee, TR Ziliang, who was also the leader of opposition, informed that both groups understand each other and the expectation is that the two Nagan negotiating groups sit across the table along with the 60 elected members. There's a long gap. We have met them. Due to this lockdown, we could not communicate each other. But after a long time, we met and uh, we interacted. I think that was a very smooth uh, sailing. And they understood our point. And we also understood their contention. So I think our expectation is the two Naga negotiating group will sit across the table and along with the 60 elected members so that we could arrive at some kind of conclusion. And then uh, we have requested them to resume the talk with the government of India and we will also pursue on behalf of them as a facilitator so that we can arrive at the common ground and uh, the Naga negotiating group will approach the government of India with, uh, with a common approach. So that's how we expect that uh, we, we can arrive at a kind of conclusion. In connection to the recent and most shocking state political developments of the Naga People's Front, joining with the ruling PDA government led by the NDPP, leader of opposition TR Ziliang, has confirmed that his party, the NPF, has agreed to the concept of an oppositionless government, while the core committee was formed under the banner of One Solution, One Agreement in regard to the Naga peace talks, Ziliang also made known that the concept of one government is mainly for the Naga political issue as well. Further, an NPF MLA revealed that seven NPF legislators did not attend the meeting deciding for an oppositionless party and the reasons for their absence was only best known to them. One solution, one agreement, and then now one government. Uh, is that related to the peace talks about joining the PDA alliance? Yes, very much. We have agreed to the concept of this opposition as government because of this uh, Naga political issue. When we have opposition and ruling, we, we come together in the assembly, but we have differences outside the house. So if we are together in the government, we are not for any kind of post, mm -hmm. but if we are together, like framework agreement mm -hmm. was signed. That time was also, we, we had the opposition less government under my leadership. So that is met down to the people, it is possible when we are together. And there is a way government of India will listen when we are together mm -hmm. and when we have common approach. With that perception, we have decided to agree 
to the concept of this opposition-less government. 16-year-old Kenny Nothori outshone others in the recently held high school leaving certificate examination of 2021 to top the rank table scoring 591 marks of a total of 600 marks, which is 98.50 percentage, conducted by the Nagaland Board School Education Examination 2021. The results were announced on Tuesday afternoon by the NBSC. Thori hails from Kegwema village in Koima district and is a student of Trinity School of Koima. Brought up from a humble family, she is the daughter of Kulule Thori and Kreno Thori and have four siblings in the family. Interestingly, Thori's two elder sisters, Kesino and Kethono, were also among HSLC toppers in 2015 and 2019. Talking exclusively to Hornbill TV, Thori said she wasn't expecting to make the toppers list but felt humbled to be the topper of the HSLC exam. She credited God for the success and acknowledged her parents for molding her. While most are opting for the science stream, as a topper she opted to take arts and said her aim in life is to be a civil servant and help people. To continue her further studies, she said she would be joining Northfield School Koima as her first choice. In her quest for success, she told this reporter that she studied 4-5 to five hours a day and studied 9-10 to 10 hours during the last two months before her examination. Asked about her inspiration, she said it comes from her sisters who were also toppers in the HSLC. Without any private tutor, she learned from her sisters or cleared doubts from her teachers when required. With the COVID-19 pandemic across the world, she also spoke about tackling online classes from which she faced some problems. In a message to her juniors, Thori said they should keep their trust in God and he will surely help them even when they face a lot of challenges. We have to do our part by making a study schedule and God will help you, the topper said. The Chakruma Youth Organization has expressed exasperation for what it stated was the National Highway and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited construction work on the four-lane National Highway 29 from Dimapur to Koima. The CYO issued a statement on Wednesday stating inadequate safety measures, inordinately slow progress of work and poor workmanship. The organization stated that the topography of the region requires fresh earth cutting for stability of the road given the river flowing alongside the road, but very less earth cutting was done and the road widened on frail earth fillings, the CYO stated. With the first showers of the monsoon, a great part of the road has been washed away and the remaining parts is a liability endangering the lives of thousands of commuters and also threatening the normal life of the citizens, the CYO stated. The CYO has again appealed to the authorities and the government to seriously and sincerely resolve the matter, calling for appropriate action for failing to fulfill the requirements of the construction of the National Highway. The organization would be compelled to seek its own course of democratic justice for posterity if the repeated pleas remain unheeded to, and the NHIDCL along with the ECI would be held responsible for any eventualities, the CYO stated. Amid the crisis in the Manipur Pradesh Congress, the All India Congress Committee in charge and former Union Minister Bhakta Charandas arrived in Imphal on Wednesday. Bhakta Charandas' arrival in Imphal is being seen as an attempt by the Congress High Command to resolve the crisis within the party. Upon arrival at the Beer Tikendrajit International Airport, Charandas said the purpose of his visit was an organizational matter and to make strategies for the state assembly elections, which has been scheduled for February next year. He said that the party has had a series of meetings since Tuesday and had been able to resolve most of the issues. When asked by media persons about the resignation of Manipur Pradesh Congress President Govindas Kanthaujam, Charandas replied saying that the party is yet to decide on the matter, but the Congress High Command is very serious about such matters in any state and that indiscipline cannot be tolerated. Charandas said the MPCC President post is a most responsible post as it is the head of the organization and people holding the post should behave responsibly and for which the Congress is going to strengthen the organization. When asked about media reports about some Congress party MLAs demanding the removal of the leader of opposition, Charandas said all the MLAs are with the leader of opposition. It may be mentioned that three-time Chief Minister Okram Ibobi Singh is the leader of opposition. O. Ibobi Singh is known to be very close to both Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. 
Charandas further said that on the 26th of this month, the Supreme Court will give a verdict on the case relating to 12 BJP MLA's disqualification, case for holding office of profit, and on that day, the fate of the BJP government will be decided. If the 12 MLA's holding the post of Panchayat Secretary get disqualified, the Nbiran Singh government will be in trouble because the BJP will not have enough numbers unless some MLA's in the Congress decide to cross floors. So, the political temperature in the state in the coming days is expected to heat up. Two prominent political personalities from Assam, Samujal Bhattacharya from ASU and Anup Chetia from the Protox faction of Ulfa, reportedly figure in the leaked list of potential spyware targets. Tucked away in the leaked list of thousands of phone numbers that were analyzed by Pegasus project partners is one that belongs to Bhattacharya, the wire reported. The wire's examination of the list, most numbers in which are clustered in countries that experts say have had active Pegasus operations in the past and some of which were found to have been targeted by Pegasus through forensic analysis revealed that one number belonged to Patacharya. The Y reported that his number was aided to the list less than a month before the Ministry of Home Affairs announcement of the new Close 6 committee. Among the new members was Patacharya, advisor to the All Assam Students' Union, a signatory to the accord with the Union government in 1985, which was meant to put an end to the anti-foreigner agitation that the powerful student body had spearheaded. Another person whose phone number is in the leaked database is the Protox United Liberation Front of Assam, leader Anup Chetia. One of his two phone numbers was selected as a possible candidate for surveillance in late 2018, the wire said. Yet another phone number found in the leaked data is that of a Delhi-based writer from Manipur, Malem Ningtoja. Coronavirus cases among Olympic representatives are on the ascent and around 15% of those are unvaccinated, provoking admonitions from medical specialists about potential far-reaching influences in case the world's biggest game doesn't brace down on infection transmission. Set to start on Friday with the opening ceremony, the Tokyo-based Olympic Games were promoted as safe from any danger by organizers. However, the Games have so far been tormented by pandemic among competitors, hotel workers and others associated with the event and those partaking have not been vaccinated. A total of 67 cases have been recognized among those certified for the Games since most competitors and authorities started showing up on July 1, authorities said on Tuesday. The top of the Tokyo arranging panel didn't preclude dropping the event completely if cases started to spike. More than 4,300 people have died of the deadly black fungus in India in a growing epidemic of the disease. India has reported 45,374 cases of this rare and dangerous infection called mucomycosis, Health Minister Mansukh Mandavia has said. Nearly half of them are still receiving treatment and this aggressive infection affects the eyes, nose and sometimes the brain. Most of the cases involve recovered and recovering COVID-19 patients. Doctors say the fungus has a link with the steroids used to treat COVID and diabetics are at particular risk. The infection affects the sinuses, the brain and the lungs and can be life-threatening in diabetic or severely immunocompromised individuals such as cancer patients or people with HIV AIDS. Doctors say the infection seems to strike 12 to 18 days after recovery from COVID. Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan have reported the most number of cases according to official data. Two states, Maharashtra and Gujarat, accounted for 1,785 deaths. Dr. Raguraj Hegde, a Bangalore-based eye surgeon who has treated a number of mucormycosis patients, told the BBC that there has been massive undercounting of both cases and deaths of the disease. Typically, deaths in mucormycosis occurs weeks to months after getting the disease and the present systems are not good to capture that data, he said. Kerala Health Minister Veena George has asked the Director of the Health Department to conduct an immediate inquiry on the suicide of Annaya Kumari Alex, Kerala's first transgender radio jockey and the first from the community to file nomination as a candidate in the recent state assembly polls. The transgender organization has also lodged a complaint in this regard. George said that an expert committee would be set up to study issues related to gender reassignment surgery. The 28-year-old Anaya Kumari Alex was found hanging at a flat in Kochi yesterday. 
a few weeks before, Anaya had raised allegations that she was facing serious health issues following a sex reassignment surgery done in June the previous year. She had made allegations against a doctor and a private hospital. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic can have severe effects on children's mental and physical health, said Dr. Praveen Kumar, Director, Department of Pediatrics, Lady Harding Medical College. The pandemic can have a severe effect on children's mental and physical health, Dr. Kumar said. They are confined at home for more than a year and moreover, illnesses in the family, wage losses for parents have increased stress. Dr. Kumar said, further, children may express psychological distress by acting out in a different way and each child behaves differently and some may become silent while others may express anger and hyperactivity, Dr. Kumar said. He also cautioned that caregivers need to be patient with children and understand their emotions. Look for signs of stress in young children, which could be excessive worry or sadness, unhealthy eating or sleeping habits and difficulty with attention and concentration, he said. Families also need to support children to cope with stress and also allay their anxiety, he added. Dr. Kumar said, COVID vaccine for pregnant women and lactating mothers will protect the growing fetus and newborn against the deadly infection. As per Dr. Kumar, recent surveys have shown similar seropositivity in children and adults. However, due to a larger number of people affected during the second wave, number of infected children were also more as compared to the first wave. So far, the mortality rate in children is lower as compared to adults and is usually seen in children with comorbidities. Slamming the BJP-led central government over the ongoing Pegasus controversy, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee on Wednesday pitched for opposition unity against the threat to democracy in the surveillance state. Speaking during the virtual address on the occasion of Martyrs Day, Trinamool chief said she would be visiting the national capital from July 27 to July 29 and would be keen on meeting the opposition leaders. Accusing the BJP of bulldozing the federal structure of the country, Banerjee said she has plastered the camera of her phone. She congratulated the people of the country and West Bengal for voting for her party and said they fought against money, muscle, mafia power and all agencies. Despite all odds, she said they won because the people in Bengal voted for her party and received blessings from the people in the country and the world. Asking the opposition to unite against the BJP juggernaut, Banerjee conveyed her humble regards to all national, local leaders including Sharad Pawar, P. Chidambaram, Digvijay Singh, Ram Gopal Yadav, Jaya Bachchan, Sanjay Singh, Manoj Jha and Priyanka Chaturvedi. They have to unite together and their self-interest should be to save the people and the federal structure to save the country, she said. She asked NCP Chief Sharad Power to call a meeting while she was in Delhi to discuss uniting the whole opposition as one front. The World Bank has unearthed a racket of 23 Pakistan companies adopting corrupt, fraudulent, collusive and coercive practices to win contracts for projects undertaken by the distribution companies and national transmission and dispatch company. According to the report prepared by the World Bank Group Integrity Vice Presidency, these companies had organized themselves into cartels for mutual benefit. The World Bank's International Bank for Reconstruction and Development had entered into a loan agreement with the government of Pakistan in July 2008 as part of the Electricity, Distribution and Transmission Improvement Project. The project's objective was to strengthen the capacity of distribution and transmission networks in Pakistan to meet the increasing electricity demand in selected areas while strengthening the institutional capacity of certain distribution companies and supporting other priority areas of power sector reform. The financing of the project was supplemented by two International Development Association's credits. The project was closed in February 2014. The INT's administrative inquiry focused on six project finance contracts to supply electricity transmission equipment. It was revealed that for years the public procurement market in Pakistan for certain kinds of electricity transmission equipment was controlled by a group of companies which has been referred to as members of the cartel in the report. These companies manipulated the market in advance to ensure that only some preferred companies won contracts including the World Bank financed ones. The companies thus collaborated on bid prices. Financial scams are a common phenomenon in Pakistan. A fragile regulatory framework, a subverted judicial system and connivance of law enforcement authorities emboldened unscrupulous people entities to loot the exchequers, money to satiate their own greed. 
And that was all for the eye for the latest news and updates. Stay tuned to Onbill TV.